in the head-to-heads, nine wins to three. So, the venue Cymru is ready in the commentary box. Neil Folds and Clive Everton are all set for the opening exchanges. But first to introduce the players, our MC, John McDonald. Hello and a very warm welcome to the venue Cymru here in Clandidno. <laughs> 16 of the very best players in the world assembled to lift this coveted title and now there is two. Ladies and gentlemen, Walt Snooker proudly presents the Labrooks Players' Championship Finals. All coming to you live on ITV Sport as we welcome the millions of viewers joining us around the world. Our referee, Yang Shears, is set up and ready to go. It's time now to meet the finalists. Firstly, ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome the inaugural Players' Champion and the 2005 Champion of the World, the magician, Sean Murphy! Now, ladies and gentlemen, here he is, the winner of 32 ranking events, the five-time champion of the world, the Rocket Ronnie O'Sullivan! He's the greatest player we've ever seen. But it's on the day that counts. And back in November, at the Champion of Champions, it was Murphy's day. If he can play to the same standard that he produced in last night's semi-final against Mark Williams, it could be his day again. He could be the one holding up the Players' Championship trophy this evening. So boys, for the toss, tails, and it's tails, nine first, and then toss it down. First frame, Ronnie O'Sullivan to break. Well, Ronnie just double checking with referee Yan Shears as to how many frames have been played this afternoon, it's nine, as you heard. Followed by the 10 tonight, a maximum of 10 if we need them all. Whereas O'Sullivan had 40 minutes on the practice table, Murphy contented himself with a mere 10, Sound just the, strolled in a quarter of an hour before the start the the studio. and decided that was enough for him. As it was yesterday, didn't do him any harm. He made 133, first shot. I think some door or other is open in the player's line of vision. Still, this capacity crowd won't mind waiting a few seconds longer. Well, whatever it was that was delaying the action, it's been fixed.
foul. Well, the worst oh, thing about that shot four. was not the in-off, it was where the red that he missed finished up. I mean, if it stays at this end of the table, he's done no damage, but he has done damage. It's gone close to the middle bag, and as you can see, O'Sullivan is in hand. One. Six. Seven. Immediately looking at getting into the bunch, doing what he does best, being scoring early. There is one red that is potable, that one that he's finished perfectly in behind. Touch of running side on that little shot on the black there to get the correct side of the table. I'm going to disturb reds here. Fifteen. Oh. Found a way of landing on the ping, which may not have been initially the plan. And he could be away here. Well, he could have played that just to make sure of the blue and play on already in the middle of 20. the table. But he wanted to get himself over again to the right. He's got an option of the red at the bottom of the bunch or the one to the middle. Options are plenty. Twenty-one. Don't know whether that red two or well, right next to the pink pots to the left corner because that would be one way of tidying up that part of the table. I think it does go, looking at uh, one or two angles. And I can see the reason he would want to play that. 26. Twenty-seven. And again, that cue ball is under control. It, there have been spells this week where his cue ball control has not been as immaculate as it usually is. And he's just often potted his way through breaks. Once again, just drifting a little bit out of position there. Maybe a little amount of tension in his arm. You can understand why. Big occasion. It's now a difficult one. Pot and position. Not too surprised that he missed that. Ronnie O'Sullivan, 35. If it had just been a question of potting it, there would have been no problem, but he had to strike downwards to try and get some backspin. One. If that red hadn't have covered the one to the right corner, Eight. he would have been really in a good position here. It's a little tricky now. He has got pots on, but none of them are exactly how he'd like them. Red 
head to the middle. Uncomfortably close cue ball and object ball here. Caused him no problem. No. What a chance. For a deadly counter attack. None of the remaining balls is in an apparently safe position. I think we can anticipate a very attractive match between these two, the, their general style of play. You saw him stretch 15. over there and have one or two twinges in his shoulder, perhaps, in his neck that's been bothering him all week. Can't honestly say it's affected the standard of play, though. He's played very well, actually. He certainly mentioned that he has to play the balls in front of him. And I think against Sir Sullivan, that's very important three. because if you play the man with all his abilities, it really can make you feel a little bit as if you're out of, out of your league. I mean, that even as someone as good as Sean four. might be feeling that. I think that's a problem that Murphy suffered from in their earlier matches. I think he's more or less got over it now. He realises that he himself one. is a great player. And on his day, 32. quite capable of beating O'Sullivan. Well, he, he hits the ball wonderfully well. Action that any player would would be happy to have. Forty six. Forty seven. No. Obviously, you can just stun her right up for the red that's left of the pink. I think that's what he'll do here. Any conceivable problem is the other red. Of course, he's not near a cushion, but he's still got to land in behind the red to probably the left middle. Still got to be done. 53. So one more positional shot required. 54. And he should be able to do it here. Doesn't want to fall in between it, leaving himself on the red to the middle or the corner, which can happen. Um, deciding to go that way. I'm a little surprised he's played that. This now becomes a shot that could go 61. wrong. The fact that he's played on it into the corner. Very nice. Very nice. This is just what he needed. He let O'Sullivan in. He didn't, for once, win the frame in one scoring visit. And now, sixty-six. Sean Murphy punishes him. Snooker's required. Sixty-eight. Won't get a chance to play them either. O'Sullivan was first in with thirty-five, but left himself too straight and too near a cushion. For a black. 71. He rattled it in the jaws. And Murphy has made this immaculate frame winning clearance. 75. 80. The way that Murphy has taken this frame winning opportunity. Pretty reminiscent of his start against Mark Williams last evening when he went to 3 0 with two centuries and a 70 clearance to win on the black. Sean Murphy clears up with 93 and leads Ronnie O'Sullivan by a frame to nil. John Murphy to break. The Players' Championship trophy in the foreground there.
Murphy won the inaugural Players' Championship in 2011 when it had a somewhat different format. Wow, that is a terrific part, and that's the almost a carbon copy of the shot that Murphy, of course, got wrong and went in off in the previous frame. Played to perfection this time by O'Sullivan. Well, he's been sent a message already from his opponent that he's playing well, Eight. he's queuing beautifully, and now he has to respond himself. No. He will screw into the bunch here in some way. He would, I think, like to have been marginally straighter on this to really get into them how he would have liked. It's hard for him to hit the left side of the pack because he's just got too much angle. That's probably as good as he could hope for, and that is bitterly disappointing wow. and unlucky. Ron O'Sullivan, nine. Sean Murphy, seven. Particularly as he's left Murphy right in. Yes, yeah, seeing that again, I don't see how he could have foreseen that happening. Very early stages in a pretty long match, but... And Murphy has settled into it better, what? no doubt about that. I think we all know that and he will be as aware as anybody that you can't let O'Sullivan get off to a start and start romping away with a match. Can we silence the devices, please? Four. Well, he has always made those sort of shots look very, very easy. As mid-range, just pumps them in. That's also a very good shot. Banana the cue ball around. It looked like it was going to just miss them all, but it arced into the top 11. of the bunch there. He got a little fortunate, but he played it well. Eighteen. Nineteen. Twenty-six. Whether or not this turns into a frame-winning contribution will depend on how he develops the cluster. Yes, and he's a bit straight on this. Of course, with the blue away from its spot, it's going to 
power the cue ball back up the table. 27. Played it well, though, didn't he? Again for the blue to a corner bag, back on its own spot now. And like you say, Clive, it appears it's all about those five reds grouped together and how he opens them up. 32. Certainly better from the black to get into the bottom three. Almost impossible from in behind the blue. That's why he played it that way. Might just played a glance at three reds. And if he misses them, he's always got the red on the left as backup. Well, he's on the red anyhow. The problem is still there. 40. Oh, this is probably the biggest shot of the frame so far, the next one. 48. Mm. Well, you'd fancy him for this shot, but there is, of course, 48. quite a lot on it. A lot riding on it, which makes, of course, its own problems and his own pressure. And he's usually very good at these mid-range shots, as I mentioned. 12. Well, Murphy's potting at middle and long Murphy. distance 48. has been so deadly. It was a surprise that he missed that. It's an amazing game, isn't it? Just You knew there was something riding on it, more so than usual. Lead of 46 points is all well and good, but with the ball's in the middle of the table. The next mistake is probably going to cost either player the frame. That's an immaculate O'Sullivan safety. And this frame might just be on the brink of turning again in that man's favour. O'Sullivan was very unlucky to give Murphy the opening for his break. Potted the black. Went into the bunch, and a red fell unpredictably into a little pocket. This is a real headache because he could play off the bottom cushion and try to glance at three reds, but if he got it wrong, he'd do all sorts of damage. And laying onto them from the side rail, well, it's not a particularly wide target. A target that wasn't wide enough for him anyway. Wow. And a miss. I wonder if that's a free ball. Ronnie O'Sullivan, four. Worth a look. Must, must be able to hit both edges of a red or combination of reds. Well, the one... I think it's free ball. Yes, I think that. It's the one by the pink that's the one that... Uh, I think, uh, Ronnie is not sure it is a free ball. I think it is. I think Yan Chies is right. Maybe it's second opinion from someone else, but I'm not sure it's No, no, you can't have any huh? second opinion. What, what, which one do you think you can hit? Oh, huh? <laughs> no, because the pink is too wide. It's too far in front. You can't hit the edge on the left. I think Yan Chies is right. I think it's a free ball. I'm not sure. Ronnie not doing himself any favours here. He's just doing what he thinks is right, isn't he, Clive? He well, he's got it. a highly developed sense of fair play. <laughs> and arguing against his own interest, you would think. A bit of a contrast with all the, the, the divers in football. This is probably the most these two have ever spoken. Yeah, it's a free ball. It definitely is a free ball. <laughs> no problem. Blue ball? The blue ball? So blue is his extra red. What? Yes, I think.
think everything was correct there. Ronnie was right to crew if he wasn't sure, but I think Jan Shear's got the right call. Five. Six. So a chance for a winning clearance for O'Sullivan. Better shot than it looked live, wasn't Twelve. it? He would just roll it in, he sort of half stunned that, queuing over the ball. Thirteen. Even though it's a long match, it kind of feels important that he does do it for his chances. And I mentioned his cue ball has just been a little short 20. of where he wants to be on a number of occasions. There's another example of it. It's okay, though, up for the blue. That's a little short as well. Twenty six should still be all right, though. That little speck of dirt or dust on the red, as he pointed to the potting angle, would have caused him a kick. And of course, he'd done the right thing to get in first. Doesn't like it. Doesn't like his bridging, whether he bridges from the cushion or hand on table. He's gone for the long bridge. Slightly better shot than it looked again. And really, this is the key shot in behind the red, and he's a very strong favourite to win frame two. Inch perfect. perfect. Yes, and he'll be happy enough to play on a, a lowish value colour here. Anything that's near the yellow. That's why he's played on the green. 31. Well, it's been already a very gripping first two frames in what could be an absolute classic of a match today between these two. Forty-three. Murphy was the better part of forty in front when he missed a middle distance red. Forty-eight. Well, he doesn't need the black, and uh, it's just as well because he would hate to have to go around the table. This is frame ball. Sixty-four. And with an immaculately taken fifty-five to the pin. 
Ronnie O'Sullivan equalises at one all. Three. Ronnie O'Sullivan to bring. <laughs> one all then. Sean just looking up at one or two people just returning to their seats. He's probably just going to wait until it, it all happens before he plays his next shot, and it has. Everyone's settled in nicely. There's two of those he's missed. This one at the start of the match. And he's not got the cue ball very far up the table either, which was part of the plan. Not an easy starter because he can't really play on the black, which means he can't roll it in. What? Well, that'll do it. It's a very fine pot and position there. Six. Well, he's not straight, which is the good news for Ronnie. Seven. Fourteen. Fifteen. Possibly into the bunch while retaining position on the red, which is already loose. Just concentrated on the loose red. Yes, he might have thought he would just glance off them and go up the table. But it 22. means that the next time is his last chance to get the bunch open. He's normally very, very good. And of course, once already in this match, he's gone into them and knocked a red in, which is, uh, you're always going to be unlucky when that happens. Well, that's just a beautiful shot. What is he on? Yeah. A slow walk round the table Third. says nothing easy. Deserved better, that shot. For all the players' skill, you have to rely on a favourable run of the ball with that type of shot. Yes, the red is playing to the middle. He's got to thread the cue ball round behind the black and onto it. Didn't expect him to miss it. Ronnie O'Sullivan, 30. Yes, he was a little unfortunate on the previous shot. But it's mistake followed by immediate chance. That's the story of the first two and a bit frames. Hardly any safety. One. There was one important safety shot, which eventually won Ronnie and Sullivan the previous frame, but nothing much else. It's pot after pot. Punch and counter punch. Six. No. Ten. 
10. Sixteen. Seventeen. Now the three reds small little pyramid the red below them will pop it will certainly disturb those three reds here 25 opening up into a really good chance of his own 10. He looked at the left hand red. It was always going to be there for him, but again, it's not. It's not simple. Pot or position. Thirty three. What you want? Well, if he's playing on that red, he's got to be quite precise with the cue ball here. The one that he looked at there, the one close to the pink. Well, he decided against it, but maybe he's thinking about it for the next red that he takes what after is? this one. Still got the problem of the two reds that are not really available. In the many pockets can't win the frame without them. Forty nine. angle gives him not that many options here it's gonna be perfect little stun shot if he's held the spot can he pop the red I don't think so I think it'll go in front of the cue ball and that was always going to be the problem with this surely if this goes as close to the cue ball that red won't be on he needed to stun through another inch so, so that the pink would go back on its own spot. 55. Yes, that's why he stayed down. He knew his fate there. Being straight on the pink was no good to him. John Murphy. 55. Into the lead by 25, but touching ball. Not the frame winner he was hoping for. No, Clive, and touching ball means Ronnie could get him in all kinds here. Could be in big trouble. And the advantage is of 25 points is negligible, really. With the Sullivan 
ahead in the uh, sort of state of the safety. Didn't need a second invitation to make it tough. Murphy can get to the right-hand red to play up and down into Bolt, but he has to be very careful with the red finish. Murphy will be very happy with that. Yes, he will. Great shot, and Ronnie tapped the table. Acknowledging that shot. Murphy's safety, I think, has improved a lot this season. Playing the two-cushion glance. Tough shot. Foul. And a miss. John Murphy, four. There's an argument that he could play from here, actually, because the thin safety would, from the red where it's placed is not nice. Well, it's gone with having it put back. It was a 50-50 call, I think, because I think Ronnie will end up getting this shot, <coughs> making the adjustment. Obviously very important that the key ball is back exactly where it was, so he can make the adjustment. Foul. And a miss. John Murphy, four. Yeah, so this time Ronnie is not leaving his stance and that kind of helps him to get a real idea of what he's got to do. Sean had every right to come to the table there and have another look and make Ronnie sit down and start afresh. He might have wanted to do that. Because oh, okay. Ronnie is locked in the position he was from the previous shot. I think I'd have made him sit down and pretend that I was going to play from where the balls lie. Third attempt, also unsuccessful. Well, he can afford oh. to do it <coughs> and a miss. at this stage. John Murphy, four. Free ball. Free ball. Won't be taken, I don't think. I can't see any value. Ronnie will keep playing this shot, but, of course, at this stage, he can still win the frame. Might, if he misses two or three more times, he might have to think of something different. Worried about hitting it full on, obviously, and that will cost him the frame anyway. That's why he's going for the thin two cushion. <laughs> I think that demonstrates why the miss roll is what it is. And they had to keep getting put back. And now. Ronnie's back in the frame. Yes, in the dim and distant days before the miss rule was applied in its current form, you very often saw players making a, a plausible attempt with no great intention of actually escaping from the snooker. Yes, I mean, it was called a deliberate miss because it, in those days, players were deliberately missing, simple as that because the four points were better than the damage they would cause if they played it and hit one. His biggest worry here is he's got a clear shot of the only safe ball on the table. He doesn't want to play this red. Because he's 37 in front.
attempted the glancing escape, but that wasn't a glance. Now he could have done with uh, going the way that Ronnie did, missing it. Just trying to get there in the end, maybe second or third attempt. Anything but what he did do. One. You would think that the red that is on the black cushion is going to decide the outcome of this frame. Seven. Eight. Yes, Clive, and if he could land nicely in behind it, it would make the shot a lot easier to roll in. And that looks to be as good as you could hope for. No obvious pace needed. It give the pocket 15. every chance to accept the ball. Drop out with the black. Sixteen. Fascinating. That's a good play, this. That's an ooze and ours, but I think he was in more control of that shot than it may have appeared. Twenty-five. Twenty-eight. Now just checking, he will need the lot. There'll only be six in front of the pink if, when he pots it. Thirty-two. This will count as a real steal for O'Sullivan. In some ways, the previous frame was as well. 43. And with that 50 clearance, Ronnie O'Sullivan wins the frame on the black and leads Sean Murphy by two frames to one. Brave Hall, Sean Murphy to break. <laughs> so Ronnie O'Sullivan opens the fourth frame, 2 1 in front. I think O'Sullivan believed that he wasn't going to leave any other red if he missed the one he attempted. But I'm not entirely sure about that. Red goes to right middle. One. Quite amazing that there was a gap there at all. Money didn't have any clue that that red was going to be available, I don't think. Gross unforced error. Oh, right. Yeah, I think he was thinking a lot about going in to the bunch and exactly how he was going to execute that part of it and forgot the the main bit, the pot in the first place on the black. And he's looking at this plant. I think this is tough. He's got to cut the first red thin onto the second one. And the whole thing is very close up. This looks a very difficult shot to me. Played it well. What?
both players on 93%, pot success rate. But some pots and some missed pots are more important than others. Eight. O'Sullivan intent on converting Murphy's error into a serious mistake. Sixteen. Seventeen. A better shot than it looked to get onto that red through the gap 24. between the bunch and the red itself. Oh dear, a bit of a slide there, could have done itself a mischief. Well, it'll be an unusual way of playing it, put an extension on there and playing it without the rest, but now he's back to that. It's not really the red that's the problem here, it's getting onto a colour to get the bunch opened up. Twenty-five. This is, uh, I think, the key shot, potentially, in the whole frame. He played on the black, but he looked at the pink briefly. This is the one. Not had the best of luck when he has gone into them in this 32. match. So I have to resort to safety. I think he's looked at this as a possible shot to nothing. <laughs> well, he hit that all wrong. Yeah, it was a difficult shot, but when you hit the wrong side of them, it's always a slightly uncomfortable feeling. Attempt at the pot. Concentrated on a good safety. Yes, and it's pretty good now that the blacks come out to the right of the table. Run his thin safety. He'd be worried about that shot because he could go into the black. With the right hand side of the bunch, so he's trying to bury the cue all into them now.
Well, ideally, only be eyeing up the in behind yellow and brown, covering a reasonably sized target in the middle of bulk there. And that's exactly what he's played. It's a beautiful shot. <laughs> Cuts off the left hand side of the table completely. And there's not a great deal on the right side that uh, Murphy will be interested in either. The red on the right is too close to the side cushion to make the crossover safety feasible. I think he's left, left with uh, the two reds down the table below the black spot, the right red. Trying to get the cue ball in behind that. I believe he's only shot here. And it's not much of a shot either. Audience very engrossed in this first three and a half frames. Been really good snooker. Yes, yeah, a mixture. It hasn't all been breaks. There's been some exceptionally good tactical play. Well, he's playing up and down onto the men on the cushion here. And that is worked out horribly. Goodness me. Foul. It's, uh, and a miss. Ronnie O'Sullivan, six. Not many ways to describe this shot. All I know is the cue ball checked alarmingly from the bottom cushion. He saw the rest. It couldn't hardly have worked out any worse. Well, at the very least, he should have hit the red that he was aiming for on the right side cushion. One. Quite tight, it only just passes. No. Uh, he mustn't play a shot in frustration here. He's still 46 in front, he mustn't leave the last shot in his mind. And I think that's exactly what he did, I don't think he had to play it. Nine. Well, he was very disappointed to lose position, but even leading by 46, that was a pretty rash shot. Gives Murphy a chance for an immediate reply. Doesn't really suit O'Sullivan to play that way, does it? He's not massively keen on having three or four chances in a frame and Needing them all to get over the line. Forced it a bit there, I think. One. Yes, Murphy hasn't earned this chance. It's been given to him. This time, it's Murphy's turn to be unlucky with the split. Eight. Yes, very much so. And uh, doesn't have a lot of options here either. What does he do? Just touch into the couple of reds. And Ronnie, of course, wouldn't John Murphy, eight. have any interest in a re-rack in a few shots time with his lead of 38 points. 
Buttaci. Touching both reds, I think I heard Jan Shears say. Well, I suppose if he's got no other shot, he could ever dart at one of these reds to the middle pocket. By no means easy. If you haven't got a safety shot, I guess it's worth having a go. He's left nothing easy to start with either. This is awkward with the blue there. This is a missable shot now. Close to a waistcoat foul as well. Great shot. Yeah. Now that really was good, I think. There were lots of reasons why he could have missed that. And with his few point advantage, two reds in the middle of the table. He's away and gone. Eight. Nine. Sixteen. Well, red high value colour, but I think red colour red is what he's aiming for. Which will certainly seal this fourth frame. Seventeen. It's not one of his best shots, but if he can drop this blue in, he'll land in behind a couple of reds. So it looks very much as if O'Sullivan is going to lead 3-1 at the mid-session interval. I think the decisive factor over the last few frames has been O'Sullivan's tactical play. It has been superior to Murphy's, both defensively and creatively. Yes, yeah, so and we know how gifted a player he is, but he's had to work really hard to win these frames, actually. Ronnie O'Sullivan, 29, frame. Sean Murphy took the opening frame with a break of 93, but it's Ronnie O'Sullivan who leads by three frames to one at the mid-session interval. Early stages of this best of 19 frames final, and there's five frames left of this afternoon's session for Sean Murphy to get back on terms. So let's return to the arena where your commentators, Alan McManus and Phil Yates, are awaiting the players, and to reintroduce them, here's John McDonald. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Time to welcome back our finalist, Sean Murphy and Ronnie O'Sullivan.
O'Sullivan 3-1 ahead. It could have easily been the other way around. And so Sean Murphy has got to try and dismiss the disappointments of the early stages of the match. Forget them and get on with the job. Very easily said, not so easily done. Frame five. Ronnie O'Sullivan to breath. Please mind the sweets. Jan is refereeing his first ever world ranking event final, admonishing someone for having a noisy sweetie paper. Reminiscent of Len Ganley, that was his uh, great dislike. So he can just about get through to this, Sean. He's not been on song in the long game so far, but that's better. Well, <laughs> not only does he have the problem of facing Ronnie O'Sullivan in this final, he's now facing Ronnie O'Sullivan with a two-frame lead, and we know what he's like as a front-runner. Nine frames to be played in this opening session. Already, Sean's looking to, well, I don't know if salvage is the right word, but he can't afford to be any worse than 5-4 behind going in tonight. Four. <clears throat> Very important five frames coming up. Five. Yeah, disappointing. Two cracking res, but looks end of break. See two, two cracking res, but just got a measly five points to show for it. John Murphy, five. Murphy has achieved one comeback win against O'Sullivan over the years. 5-4 it was, quarter-final of the German Masters 2015, from 4-2 down. But Alan, as usual, is absolutely smack on. One of the great front-runners in the game, Ronnie, and when he goes ahead, normally he goes even more ahead. Yeah, he's going to have a freedom, Ronnie, you'd think, for the rest of this session. Having that lead, 2-0 down to Ding, 2-0 down to Judd, still prevailed.
Over the last four or five years, Ronnie O'Sullivan has been like a heavily fortified castle. Plenty of weapons before, and then all of a sudden he finds a new one. This ability to be able to grind things out on a regular basis, day after day, play the right shots and play great safety. And it's made him even more formidable. Well, the misjudgment there, nothing goes. Yeah, just looking at this, I'd be, I would imagine he'll take this plant on, screw back to somewhere around the left middle pocket, try and play it some sort of shot to nothing. An awful lot else on, in all honesty. It's probably worth playing. See many plants with the with object balls about four feet apart from one another. What a fluke! What a fluke! Especially with the other red going across the table and. Potentially being on for O'Sullivan. But it's not about what you fluke, it's about what you make from them. Six. Seven. Yeah, definitely valuing going into the pack here. The reds are not ideal at the moment. Oh, this is nice. Unfortunately, just covered the black to right Twelve. corner, but he may play, I mean, in fact, play a little plant again. Red build from there. Thirteen. I'm always looking at contrast between players and, and Sean's making this break here next 15. time we get a chance watch him as he's walking around the table his eyes rarely leave the bed then we see Ronnie at the table we'll see something different 16 when you see Sean and walk about his eyes are fixed Scaleb, his task at the moment is underlined by the changing odds on the match. Before the start, the sponsors offered two to seven about O'Sullivan winning it, five to two Murphy. At the interval, those odds changed to one to seven O'Sullivan, nine to two Murphy. Point in now. Frames two and three this afternoon. Sean made some starts. Makes a 48 and 55, but we got to do better than that against Seven. O'Sullivan. Let's see if we can be more decisive with this. 
Stephen always makes the point, doesn't he? That you have to punish O'Sullivan by winning frames in one visit. He didn't do that before the break. 37. Thirty-eighth. Let's see how he cues this one. Back out for the apex red of the three together. Lazy power. Forty-five. Forty-six. This was a shot actually played well last night. Played it a few times, the high black, screwing two cushions. You see, the thing here is that when he plays this, Sean Murphy, he, he, he can almost play for a blue to left middle. Look at the cue ball. Blue to left middle. He actually played it even better than he probably had hoped. 53. Because mid-distance red, he just brushes them in. Great asset to have. 54. And if he pots the black here, apart from it being frame ball, it would mean he's had the three highest breaks of the match so far. Sixty-one. John Murphy, sixty-one. Well, it should be enough, but not quite guaranteed just yet. One. Nine. Yeah, 50 behind, so seven points 16. worth of snookers to peel. Just important he finishes nice on this next black, pick his spot. Lay the snooker off the last red. That is clever. Get 17. the ping back in its spot. In behind the red. It's virtually a guaranteed good snooker. Just about where he pushes this red. Well, two aspects of this shot. One, he wants the best snooker possible, and if at all possible, he'd like to see a red go close to a colour to improve the chances of a free ball. One more Sullivan. Sean going right side, cushion first. No free ball this way. Pink here might be providing a potting guide actually on the red.
what? A few claps in the audience, but he didn't want that at all. Has to pot a high value killer. Oh. Seven. But now, 36 behind, 27 on, needs three snookers. It's important he gives this everything here. I think mentally he'll only need two snookers, Ronnie. A four-pointer and a five-pointer should he get that far. Seven. See, players mentally, even though it's nine points, the difference to peel. They don't think that's two snookers, they think it's only two. Yeah, good touch, Sean. So as I say, it's definitely worth Ronnie giving this is all. I'll try and get the first one. this week at Venue Cymru have been a revelation. Fantastic. One of the best venues, not just in the UK, but anywhere in the world. Two. Five. I think, Alan, Sean will be very pleased with this frame, just what he needed. Yeah, no doubt about it. You know, 4-1 down, things would have been looking bleak. No. <laughs> 14. And although he's going to trail 3-2, he's actually scored more points in total. And no Sullivan. And a friend. Not going away, Sean Murphy. Determined to stick in there. And that's precisely what he did by winning frame five. So Sullivan's lead is reduced. The Rocket now only 3 2. Back to North Wales and the Ladbrokes Players Championship final. Now, that face might not be familiar, but the voice would be. That's John Gwynn, an absolute broadcasting legend in the world of darts. You've heard his voice countless times if you watch the Arras. Thank you. Yeah, I had the pleasure Frame of meeting six. him for the first time earlier on. I didn't recognise him, but the minute he started speaking to me, he knew exactly who it was. Lovely man. <laughs> so, who will hit the bull's eye in frame six? Uh, just to confirm what I said right at the end of frame five, Sean Murphy has actually scored more points even though he's behind than O'Sullivan. Those kind of things do happen occasionally. When Kent Hardy beat Stephen Hendry 18-12 in the final of the 1997 World Championship. 
Hendry, even though he was heavily beaten, actually scored more points in the match. Half chance in this red. Only thing in playing it, if he plays short of the bolt colours and misses it, the red's liable to stay near the corner. So what way does he play it? Yeah. Played it that way, but has he got the hold? Yeah, just what? about. Good shot. Good confident shot. Side cushion, side cushion. Got the reds below the cluster. Played this nicely. Maybe even bring other reds into play, putting this. Four. Five. Smashing shot. Even to the extent that the cue ball checked off the side cushion. Twenty. Twenty-one. Oh, I'll be absolutely livid with that shot. Trying to stun through the gap. Again, the cue ball far too much. The way the reds are, the way that break was developing, oh, it was early doors, but a golden chance he's passed up. Yeah, it wasn't even marginal, was it? That was a, a real... Gross misjudgment. Yeah, that was a stinker. John Murphy, 21. Uh, at least he's not left the red to the middle. Ronnie getting in behind this pink, this was, it's all about what he can do with the red. Yeah, he was able to get the red down, I said, not quite getting the nestle in behind it. But Sean Murphy created a problem, a problem of his own making here. That's a good shot. That's a good shot. And he's covered the right half of the pack as well. Yeah. Up on the table, fully merited. I think Ronnie can play this half ball with pace, though, this red. Watch the pink. He might be able to spin this off four cushions behind the pink. Yeah, the end off looks close. Foul. Show me for four. Just caught it a hair thin. That's all that was wrong with that.
Now, what are we going to get here? Is it is it deep screw? We know he possesses the Q power. Yeah, top it through. Unfortunately, not on the pink stretch, on the yellow. I'm not sure if Sean ball. Murphy actually carries a, a mini, but I think he does. I'm attempting it, probably too much of a stretch with that shoulder problem, but awesome with the rest. That is a beauty. <coughs> yes, not needed it a great deal so far in this match. That's his third attempted pot with the rest. Wait. Of course, his third successful pot. In my opinion, he is the best player, not just in the game at the moment with the rest, but ever. Yeah, power this red in, side cushion, side cushion again. Oh, you can't miss that. That's two. Sean Murphy, oh, for three. A player of Sean Murphy's class, that's two bad errors in this frame. He has to cut that out if he's going to win this match. Probably come round now, Sean. If we just look at the possibilities of playing for the black. Yep, mind made up already. This will be power again. Back up, hopefully for pink. Oh, great shot. That is a beauty <laughs> again. Chance number three. Brown ball. It's not something you say all that often at this level. These two fellas. Five. Six. I'll tell you how well Sean Murphy has played this season. Bear in mind he's missed the last couple of events because of those shoulder and neck problems. If he wins today, it will be 13. guaranteed his most lucrative season as a professional. And bear in mind, he won the World Championship in 2005. So this campaign has been really fruitful. Twenty-one. Twenty-two. Yeah. Gross misjudgment there. Put the wrong side of the pocket, and at that pace, the ball's taken a completely alien path. This is the third good chance he's had Pink in this ball. frame, and he can't refuse the pink. No, oh, my mistake. Played the safety, rightly so. 
Good 50 point lead. I just thought he was going to be tempted again there to push the boat out, Sean Murphy. But has to put these chances away. They're not going to keep coming. Yes, and in the consciousness of both players is the fact that O'Sullivan's already stolen two frames from well behind. The second on the pink, the third on the black. And although the deficit is 50, 75 points remain. Like all great champions, O'Sullivan relishes the possibility of a clearance. Because he knows these are the frames that are doubly painful for the opponent. Five. Six. Oh, that was a gorgeous shot. That was an absolute gem of a shot it didn't look much but to clear the black spot and land where he has there is again didn't look an awful lot but the, the judgement of the cannon and the line 13. was exquisite 14 He's so good in these situations, you tend to look ahead and think about potential problems. Obviously, green being so close to blue would be one of those, maybe. 21. And the pink's not ideal either. But if he gets 22. that far, at least he wouldn't have to play for the black. The pink would be enough. Shake of the head because this this is critical now. Straight or higher straight in the black. Yeah, it's gone wrong. Thirty. It's gone wrong. So I'm just going to have to settle for playing the snooker in behind the black off this. Tried as best he could to check it back. And it done much better. Thirty-seven. Big shot now. Which way does he play it? Is it dead weight to give it every chance? Oh, what a shot. Just breezed at home. <coughs> 45. Was it earlier on in this break? That was awesome. Look at this cannon. 50. Didn't make it as a snooker player. He certainly would have made it as a cat bur burglar. What a steal this will be. 54. Remember, just blue and pink will do. Nine. Springy bounce there actually left him just stretching a little but it did not matter this afternoon already three steals for Ronnie O'Sullivan 
three cheers for Ronnie O'Sullivan because the last of them was absolutely superb. Sean Murphy had three chances, and in the end, though, he lost the frame. O'Sullivan's lead expands to 4 2. What a clearance! Ronnie O'Sullivan sitting there, no doubt feeling so, so pretty content with the way that he plundered frame six. 4 2 ahead. He might well be 5-1 down. If you're just joining us, he won the second frame with a 54 clearance to the pink. He won the third frame on the black with a 50 clearance. And there a 65 clearance to pink again. And that was the, the pick of the bunch for me. Another loose one. Yeah, we mentioned, didn't we, that during that last frame, Sean Murphy, three good chances, guilt edge chances. He squandered. One. And it's amazing when a, a player wins a frame Eight. of that nature. So often they get right in in the next frame as well. Yeah, almost a double whammy. Double punishment. Nine. Things like that, that clearance in the last frame with Sullivan. 16. Almost sparks him into life. So it just raises his senses. 17. Starts getting ultra creative in these kind of positions. Is he going to rip them here? He is. 22. Middle definitely has one to far corner. Also one to far right corner. Yeah, playing it in the middle. He's just worried about the cannon. And the red. Ronnie O'Sullivan, 22. Doesn't need to be too hard on himself. That was high tariff. Same thing applied there, but it's the kind of shot that Murphy needs. He needs to reassert himself. Joe Hart's in that pocket.
just for a sense of balance, David De Gea is in the other. Yeah, there's a long pot success. Something that Sean's going to have to brush up on. 45%. Expect better from him. So, and Sean, another chance. What a nice couple of reds like this already in the match. I fancy him for this. Yeah, sometimes you see in that what? shot well. You just get the feeling he's, he's going to pop that. Cast iron chance to win the frame, far from it. But again, I keep laboring the point, but he has to make these chances count. Six. Yeah, Seven. Couldn't get on the black. Had to settle for playing around for the piggy in the middle. And that looks pretty good. Right at the bottom of the four will go. Thirteen. Fourteen. Oh, Sean, no, no, no. Sean Murphy. 14. That could be one of the most telling shots of the entire contest. No excuses. One. Yeah, here it is again. No excuses for that. That is an absolute sitter. Sean Murphy. Worrying times right now. Five. Seven. Eight. Yeah, be pleased with that because he can now play for the red behind the black spot. Three cushions. This is a basic shot for a professional. There you go. One. 
two or three in a soft bounce. He didn't quite get it though. He wanted that to be just a bit straight. That was a poor shot actually. Eleven. Oh, that is sweet as a bun. That but was an absolute gorgeous shot. Look at the control. <laughs> Top side of the blue. Absolutely plumb on it. It means that he can play the cannon here with not a lot of pace. And a little triangle of balls, any contact, they're going to spread. Oh, I'm surprised he played it so hard. I'm not criticising him. Just yeah, he's actually very unlucky. He can play that a hundred times and not hit that red full ball. Well, it was a, a shot to nothing, Devil. I think born out of frustration. But by playing it and missing it, he's actually given the tactical advantage at the very least to Murphy. advantage he's given up immediately pushing a red towards the bulk cushion not get any cue ball pressure on a Sullivan either yes the balls he's missed particularly the pink to the middle pocket and that sloppy safety there suggests that Murphy still suffering from what happened in the previous frame Playing this shot now, Sean, in behind the black, but don't get too preoccupied with trying to get up behind the black. Try and find the, the black cushion. You see, when you're trying to chase in behind the black... Wow. Well, that's good from Sean. That was a push shot, and he declared it. <laughs> not make any massive difference apart from the four points, because he's definitely not going to ask Sean to play again. But just playing that shot, as, as I say, sometimes it... You're concentrating too much and getting behind the black. Just try and dike the cue ball, as we say in Scotland. Oh, what, what a shot. <laughs> but you have to say at the moment, Sean Murphy is inviting his own problems. Four. Yeah, 33, black 40, so two more reds. We've got someone sitting there in the studio who used to love these kind of situations in his heyday, Stephen Hendry. When he detected any weakness in an opponent, he'd be in there making... Well, Hey, drubbing people, demoralising them. Fifteen. This right to be sure. Sixteen. It's looking like objective number one is going to be secured here, win the session. <laughs> now just a question of how big the lead is going to be. 19. 20. Well, Jan Shears, the referee, was a very good sprinter in his youth. One of Belgium's finest, but... He detained O'Sullivan 
for a short time on that last red. 22. There he is, a man who's also represented Belgium, by the way, in the World Sudoku Championship 24. in Prague in 2007. Twenty-seven. Talking about Sean earlier when he's in the balls playing eyes on the bed. Watch Ronnie walking round the table. If we get a chance, he thirty-one. Almost like a peacock. Looks at the crowd. Looks around. Almost saying, "What do you think of this?" See enough 36. of it now, but something to look at maybe in the next frame or two. But you know is in complete control 42. of this final. 20, oh, Sullivan's end game in this final has been far, far superior to that of Sean Murphy. And now he is halfway to ending the tournament as the champion. Halfway to victory, he leads Sean Murphy by five frames to two. He's guaranteed to be in front going into tonight. Frame eight. Mm. Sean Murphy to break. We're into the meat of the final of the Ladbrokes Players' Championship of 2018. Breaking off the season's champion of champions winner, Sean Murphy. But he trails Ronnie O'Sullivan 5-2. O'Sullivan needs five more frames today, not only to beat that man, but to equal the all-time record for most ranking tournaments won in a single season. Jointly held by Stephen Hendry, Ding Junwei, Mark Selby. And there's your striper. What a dick, just didn't get quite get hold of the cue ball. Love that noise. Leather. Running a sort of rock. Sort of shot you want to believe in, Ronnie. After that crunching last red. Yeah, more more leather. Yeah. You just saw. Sort of you just sensed that was in before he played it, didn't you? Getting a grip of this final now. Six. Contact on the yellow was unintended. Hence uh, another difficult pot coming up. Seven. Oh, how well has he played this too? He's played that to the inch. Eleven. Chance now, bring the black into play. Twelve. He's definitely not at the absolute peak of his powers today, or in fact this week, Ronnie O'Sullivan. But he, he seems to make things happen. Not at his best. 17. His cue ball's definitely not overall as good as it normally is. It's 
why. 18. His highest break so far, just 65. And that just goes to prove how patient he's become, because normally that would get really under his skin. Total package now. 23. An absolute winning juggernaut. 24. Thirteen nine. Forty. Forty seven. Forty eighth. Yeah, it's all happening now. Fifty five. You could say that was a little bit lucky, but generally speaking, going into the balls this afternoon, he's not had the best of fortune, so it was overdue. Six. Oh, he's on the red. <laughs> Six to one. You could stand there from here to eternity and never do that again. Find the gap on the way down and the way back. Unbelievable. That's a magic trick the Dynamo wouldn't attempt. Sixty-two. Just the extra pace on the cue ball. Not ideal on the black, but he's pretty much home and dry. Certainly is now. Sixty-nine. Ronnie O'Sullivan, sixty-nine in the frame. Murphy concedes. O'Sullivan makes a break of sixty-nine, his highest of the afternoon, and this is now looking really ominous for Sean Murphy. For the reason for that, O'Sullivan, seemingly in total command. He's in front by six frames to two. One more to be played. Players' championship trophy. Sitting around 20 feet away from Sean Murphy. But it must seem at the moment as though it's a million miles away. Thank you. The final frame of the session. Ronnie O'Sullivan to bring. But as a famous philosopher once said, a journey of a thousand miles begins with one small step. Murphy has to win this frame and then regroup before this evening.
oohs and ahs there. Very close. He cued it well, actually. offering Sean the left side of the pack saying go on try and find a return shouldn't get the double kiss here as long as he sends the red down straight enough oh he's waiting for the pot what, what a pot the shot of the match Salvage something out of this opening session. Eight. Sixteen. Seventeen. The overall standard of break building in this tournament has been fantastic. 24. We've had 27 centuries, one more than we had at the World Grand Prix in Preston last month. 25. Where there were more than double the matches. What Murphy needs here is a sizable contribution, not just to win the frame, but to boost confidence. Forty. Forty-one. Yeah, so the big shot, the red nearest the blue is the one full in the face. Nice and deep on the cue ball. Oh, lovely. Okay, the black stone. Forty-six. Tied up, but he's deep enough into the frame where you'd expect him. He knocks this red in, gets nice on the blue, be able to peel off enough to win the frame at this visit, and at least salvage something in the session. Well, it's not lost in this frame. I know it's obviously. Goes without saying they'd be coming out tonight and trying to win three of the first four frames. Fifty. Just thinking back to that opening red. 
If ever there was a frame that illustrated the modern game, it's, it's this one. A little safety shot that Ronnie played, trying to trap Sean into trouble. He's been sitting in his chair ever since. Considering he's 6-2 down and you could argue could be in front. This is top stuff from Sean Murphy. Could agree more, 52. Alan, and another aspect of the modern game, which is tip-top, rest play. Between them, they've taken on 13 pots with the rest, and they've potted all 13. demonstration of Q power. Back for blue. Above all, get the pot. Oh, lovely. <laughs> lovely shot. That was exceedingly dinky. Fifty-eight. Fifty-nine. What character he's shown here, Sean Murphy. Well, both will go into the break, I think. Sixty-four. With something to cling on to. Not a frame 65. that will hurt O'Sullivan, because... He did nothing wrong, played a good safety, and as Alan said, he's just sat there ever since. But Murphy's resilience in the eye of a storm. Very impressive. Seventy one. Are any prizes going this week for break of the week? You're seeing it right here. Great resilience, resolve. 76. And refusal to just lay down and die in this match. Great stuff. A pity it didn't develop into a century. But nevertheless, Sean Murphy finishes off the afternoon on a high. Generally, though, the man in command is most certainly Ronnie O'Sullivan, who leads by six frames to three. Yeah, Sean Murphy is certainly not going to gift this final to Ronnie O'Sullivan. A good finish there as they go into the interview climax of this Players Championship. We have had a glorious week here in Clendidno, a stunning day today as well, and some stunning snooker right from the opening session on Monday. Uh, but we were served up a bit of a treat this afternoon. What do we expect tonight? I'm expecting Ronnie to close this match out. I'm hoping that's not going to be the case from a neutral point of view. I'm hoping that Sean Murphy cuts out the silly mistakes. I've been thinking about it, and I think that Sean Murphy kind of finds the easier side of the game the most difficult because he's that talented. He has to cut out the silly mistakes if he's going to get back in. This 3-1 first mini session is the obvious target. Mm. Yes, Stephen Hendry, you uh, called it in the first couple of frames of the, mm. the match. You thought you know, Murphy had almost blown his chances early on in this match. Yeah, you, you really can't afford... Um, you know, when you're playing around a cell, you really got to put him in the back foot as soon as possible, keep him in his chair. He had the chance to do that in the second frame. Um, he went into the pack, he had a, a slightly long, you know, longer red than they would have liked, but I ex still expect on the way of playing the first frame to get it. He missed it. And from then on, um, you know, it was never... You know, he should have won the first three frames today, and, and that would have had a, a completely different complexion on this final. Yes, Neil Foles, uh, Ronnie's a dangerous man when he gets his nose in front. Well, certainly. I mean, very few people have beaten him from a long way in front. It is only 6-3, you know. I mean, he's not over the line yet. And, and as long as he doesn't think he's won, and one is, you know, we're thinking about this is five ranking event wins, but, he, you know, it's not 7-2 or 8-1, it's 6-3. And it's a dangerous lead in that he's still got to do this. He's still got to play and perform. And I don't know if he's playing as well as he can either. That's the only downside. Yeah, it's a best of 19 match, this one. Um, Stephen, let's take a look then at the early stages mm. of this match because... <coughs> 
Murphy won the opening frame, and this is the moment you think is this, the this second frame that was critical. Yeah, that's that's right. I mean, that's already normal. I mean, that's almost a penalty kick for someone like Sean. His, his, his long game is, is, is as good as, it, if not better than anyone in, in world snooker. He missed it by a long way. That was the first pressure shot he had to play. Yeah, almost every uh, little sequence we're seeing here. When you look at the scoreboard and the frame scores, that you can see that Sean's almost in charge for most of them, but you cannot give Ronnie O'Sullivan these little chances. Again, here in frame three, Sean's in complete control, guys, isn't he? But he, does he make a mental error, Neil? Well, I mean, look, Ronnie missed that two or three times. I think it was three times, but you know he's going to glance it in the end, and there was an opportunity to play a different shot here. I thought you know, Ronnie could have been in more trouble. In the end, you know he's so good that he's going to glance off that red, and then when he did glance off it, you knew that I said straight away in commentary, OK, now he's played that shot successfully. He's right back in the frame, and he was. And the story of this session was the way that he pinched frame two and pinched frame three, and it kind of made things um, it disheartened Sean a bit, I think. And you know what I was saying about Sean finds the, the, the sort of easy side of it the most difficult sometimes? That's basic. You've got to be thin in the red. Play and miss it the first time and get another chance and adjust, as Ronnie done a few shots before it. And I think towards the end of the first mini session, as we see here, he's taking this red on. I can't see under any circumstances putting that the way he's playing it. It was in the last chance saloon, the mini session. Mm -hmm. Ronnie breezed this red in, and it was 3 1. He didn't know what to play, I suppose. But and then I thought that shot of Ronnie's was a good one because queuing awkwardly over the top of the munch could have played a waistcoat foul. I guess Sean didn't know what to do, but you know that was 3 1, and it could easily have been the other way 3 1. He came out after that little interval and he won the next frame, he won the, the, the fifth yeah. frame, which is really important. But then Ronnie, well, it was larcenery, wasn't it? It was burglary, <laughs> <laughs> sixth frame. It, it just makes far less, it makes very few unforced errors, Ronnie O'Sullivan. Um, that, that shot there, I mean, that's a complete mishit, really. I mean, it, the, the cue ball's in no man's land. It's a basic shot, mm. isn't it? Yeah, he's, he's coming back for a black and, and probably the opposite corner. That's, this is a phenomenal shot. So much left-hand side in the cue ball. It looked like he couldn't get on the red. Yeah, I thought he'd lost the cue ball initially here and then he drifts this red. And I think this is arguably the best shot that Ronnie's played of the session coming up right here again. He was behind again, looking at the scoreboard, the frame scores and the point score. Um, knocks the black in. L lovely little yellow here to just catch the blue full in the face and um, from then he took charge. He's got a lot of class from me, hasn't he? You know, he's a shot maker there. You saw that cannon was a shot you wouldn't practice. And now Sean's wilting a bit. You know, this was a bad one to miss for no obvious reason. He's doing nothing with the cue ball. It's going up for a red anyway. So that was an error. And then, I know that you guys like this shot, I think it's brilliant. I mean, it didn't look much if you don't know how to play the game because oh. it's a little chip, but he kept getting the right side of the blue. And, you know, he was very accurate on those sort of shots. This was a push shot which, um, very sportingly, Sean uh, owned up on, which probably made no difference, but, wow. you know, sportsmanship's still alive in Snook, which is great. You were talking about mistakes. Is there, Stephen, a question about some of the decisions that that, Stephen, uh, that Sean's made in this match? Um, yeah, yeah, one or two. I, th I think when we go back to when when Ronnie missed that red three times, that, that you know, getting the, the glance and escape, he would, you know, Ronnie would have had a very like horrible shot from tight under the bolt cushion, uh, but Sean chose to put him back in again. It was only a matter of time before Ronnie got the shot right. So, so yeah, little, little decisions. Maybe you, you talk about match play and and, and hard and match play, and Ronnie's probably the, the more of more of the street fight are out there. Yeah, Ronnie is certainly um, more astute than Sean. That's nothing against Sean because he's actually improving in all departments like that. But Ronnie, you know, we think about him as being a dazzling uh, break builder and his highest break in this match so far is only 69. Not anything like he usually does. But he's got a little bit of uh, streetwise skills of, of ways, ring craft of getting, you know, frames won. It was so important though for Sean Murphy to win that last frame of the afternoon session, wasn't it? It showed great character there. Well, this is typical Sean Murphy. He can play two or three horrible frames and then he comes up with this, similar to the Mark Williams break that uh, a couple of days ago. Pots, uh, somehow pots this long red. I don't know how, because he must have been feeling awful at the time. 6-2 behind. Eventually bursts the pack open, gets them out in the open. He probably quite relieved actually to see the black get tied up there strangely and he could pick a few reds off. But it was a beautiful break. Just a pity that the match was... Falling away from it at, at that point, that time, you know. He knows how to win, Ronnie. Let's take a look at his record this uh, season. Mm. He's made a lot of finals, and when he gets into a final, he's a difficult man to beat. Well, only Sean's done it, hasn't he? That's the, you know the point. Uh, obviously, the Hong Kong Masters, Neil Robertson beating. That was a big money event, not ranking. And he's won a ranking event in each month. There's been one, you know, English Open October, Shanghai Masters November, UK Championship. December, there was nothing in, in January, only the Masters, which isn't ranking, which he didn't win. February, World Grand Prix. March, almost certainly Players' Championship. So, you know, one for every month.
something in common with every win in that, the four wins in that, he won every final easily. And that's a worry. When he wins, he wins handsomely, usually. Absolutely. Let's take a look at Sean Murphy's finals then this season, because he has been consistent this season, Alan. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he's been consistent. We don't put a lot of stock in the Championship League Group 4 up the top there. But obviously the UK, um, he got brushed aside from 5-all. Ronnie won the last five frames. Our champion of champions, he was magnificent. Competed with Sullivan all day there and a couple of other finals early on in the first mm. half of the season. And the Paul Hunter Classic and the China Championship, two finals he lost in the space of five days. Because one finished on the Tuesday and on the Sunday he lost the second one. But, you know, he, he's having a bit of a laugh and, you know, he, he should be he's pleased to be here. You know, he's one of these guys, I'm sure he's very disappointed if he loses, but he embraces everything about being a snooker pro. I mean, you've got to give him credit for that. It's great to see the two players there warming up. They're about to come out onto the floor into this quite, you know, intense environment. You know, there are not many sports where you get... You wouldn't see two tennis players just doing mm. that just immediately before coming out onto the court, would you? Don't well, suppose you would, you know. Yeah. I mean, the thing about tennis players, they actually have to knock up with each other, so I suppose there's a little bit more of a bond. Ronnie's not going to give much away there, as Stephen wouldn't have done, you know. He's, he, you know Stephen wouldn't blank in anybody who he's playing, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, at, at those times, in the, you know, probably five or ten minutes before the off, that there's almost a kind of awkwardness in the practice room when you don't know whether will I say hello or will I... What will I do? You best just keep yourself to yourself. Mm. Get the head down. Yeah, yeah take right. a leaf out of Stevens Brook. Exactly. Blank him. Exactly. Blank everyone. Say nothing. Say nothing. <laughs> All right. What, what, let's very quickly then before we uh, get this one underway. Prediction. I think Ronnie handsomely. Ten five. I think if Ronnie wins the first frame, he wins ten three. I don't think that. I, th I think Sean might come out all guns blazing. We know he's playing well enough. He might nick at the first couple and make things interesting at least. All right, then. Coming up on the other side of the break, we will have the conclusion of the 2018 Players' Championship final. Can Sean Murphy derail the rocket? We'll find out very shortly. The man they call the magician will need to have a few tricks up his sleeve if he's to resist the relentless charge of Ronnie O'Sullivan. And Stephen Hendry knows all the tricks in the book when it comes to closing out big finals. He's alongside Phil Yates in the commentary box. Before we hear from them, though, here to welcome the players is MC John McDonald. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the action that's coming to you live from the venue Cumbria here in Clandino. Hello, welcome back to our final of the Ladbrokes Players' Championship. That's brought to you by World Snooker, live on ITV Sport, as we welcome the millions of viewers joining us around the world. Our referee, Yang Shears, is ready to meet the finalists. Ladies and gentlemen, let's meet the players. Would you please welcome, firstly, the 2005 champion of the world, the inaugural Labrox Players Champion. Ladies and gentlemen, the magician, Sean Murphy! Now, ladies and gentlemen, here he is, the five-time champion of the world, the Rocket Ronnie O'Sullivan! It is the best walk in snooker. Down those stairs into the arena for the closing session of a final, particularly a tournament of this prestige. The Ladbrokes Players Championship has reached its climax. Frame 10. Sean Murphy to break. And Sean Murphy breaks off in what is a massive frame and his ambitions to win this final. I said in the studio, I feel if he loses this frame, I think the final will go very quickly. We could have a similar situation to when Ronnie beat Ding Jun Wee last, last month. We were very quickly.
John Murphy needs the same start that he had against Mark Williams last night. Just a flawless three frames he played. Yes, yeah, so Sullivan has lost substantial advantages in past finals, but not very often. Very rarely, in fact. Now yeah, that'll make him feel good. Excellent long pop. Perfectly on the black. There was a part of his game that was strangely lacking this afternoon, his long game. But it was to that pocket he potted a cracking red to launch his 77 break in frame nine. He would love something. It around that mark here. No. Let's screw the cue ball through the bunch of reds here. Well, chose to play for a comfortable red. 16. Maybe just a little bit too straight in the black to play that shot. Seventeen. Good thing as far as Sean Murphy's concerned. He'll know exactly what his job is tonight and what he has to do. He's just basically come out and play perfect snooker. Anything less. Twenty-three. He's not gonna get the job done. He's gonna play as well as he can play tonight. He's 24. capable of winning this final. Capable of freezing his opponents out for three, four, five frames at a time. Thirty one. Thirty two. He may play for the loose red here. They're not the best bunch to go into. There's not a big target. There's one red to make contact with. So yeah, play for the loose red and go up for the blue this time. About three or four inches short of the cue ball. Forty. Brown looks like the only available colour for any opportunity to go into the bunch. May have just enough angle in the green to screw directly. And this needs some cue power. Oh, what a shot. What a shot. 
That's very unlucky. That's the only problem with that shot. You just can't oh, create enough speed on the cue ball. But still, you would expect it to be on something. It's been one of those matches so far where, when the players have gone into the balls, they've not been all that lucky. That was a really valiant effort from Murphy. John Murphy, 43. Question now, can O'Sullivan pull another frame out of the fire? Remember, he stole the second, he stole the third and the sixth. Those three frames, basically the crux of the first session. Why he's where he is at the moment with a, a three-frame advantage. If he could win this one, what a massive blow that would be. completely obscured by the brown. Maybe forced to taking this right on to left corner. The only safe place for the cue ball to avoid leaving the red over the right corner is to the left hand side of that table, that ball can, but can't really get there. I suppose he could play thin off the red on the left cushion with the right hand side, double the red across and bring the Cue ball back up the left hand side of the table. The pot's almost as difficult as the safety shot. Here we go. So that bit of good fortune for Ronnie O'Sullivan. Although he's 43 points behind, he's gone favourite for this first frame. One. The cue ball just stopped in time. But for one second, he's going to be snookered in the pink. Eight. All of the great champions have been different kinds of individuals, different kind of players, but one thing they have in common, the ability to identify big moments. Now Sullivan, fully cognizant of the fact that if he can clear up here, it might be not the end, but the beginning of the end. 14. Not the obvious hurdle to overcome. Should you get that far is obviously the yellow. Four. 
15. Twenty-one. Twenty-two. Twenty-eight. Twenty-nine. Leaning over a little too far here. It was a pretty stock shot, but that's breaking the, the textbook rules. Thirty-six. Now the black's on its spot, though, this breaks so much easier. 37. You'll keep that red next to the blue till last, obviously. Either play for blue or green or brown, which obviously makes position or good position on the yellow. 44. A lot easier. He needs a nice angle in the yellow. The alternative, of course, is to try and pot two reds, two blacks, and then he would only need the yellow, so he wouldn't have to think about any position on the green. 52. Yeah, I was never one for the maths, Phil. I just kept potting balls. But one thing, he'd want to pot the green and brown as well, get the frame one. Make sure his opponent doesn't come back to the table. Well, there'll be no black potted from this red. Fifteen nine. Sixty. Yellow and green. Needs a little bounce. Well, if he picked a cube up with his hand, 65. he couldn't have placed it any better. Without wishing to exaggerate, this could be the match right here. Pinged it. Yeah, the absolute perfect angle in the yellow, 67. so you could put the yellow in just at the right dead pace to drop on the green. 70. Real killer blow to Sean Murphy's hopes, this. OK, Ronnie Sullivan was very 74. fortunate to get the snooker behind the brown. But it just looked inevitable as soon as he got in. 79. This O'Sullivan's highest break of the match. And 85. in the eyes of many, it will be considered the most significant. 20, 20, Rocket, relentless. That's four clearances in this match already. And he leads by seven frames to three. Thank you. The 11th frame. Ronnie O'Sullivan to break. Ronnie O'Sullivan, three frames away from becoming the Ladbrokes Players' Champion of 2018 and equaling the all time record for most ranking events won in a single season. A record that's held by Ding Jin Wei, Mark Selby, 
and the man sitting to my left, Stephen Hendry. Who, when he won his five, did so out of eight. Five out of eight. This would be five out of ten for O'Sullivan this season. Safety shot, Sean Murphy. Appreciated a tap on the table from his opponent. Blocked out on the right hand side of the table. to cushion glance and escape because it's very hard to see a normal route back to the bulk end. I'm just I'm going to try and lay on the two reds just above the black. Well, in fact, you could play it dead weight and three at the side, so it's kept it safe. in this black. Excellent shot. Cued that superbly well. A wry smile. Eight. They own nothing. Well, as you can see, Quite clearly, there's a red that goes. <laughs> Nine. Play for the red that's above the black to the left corner here. Well, he's got a choice there. He could put the cue ball into an area to leave himself a choice of three or four reds. Mm, could have done a lot more in the cue ball. That's a very poor shot. 13. He must have been so disappointed with his previous shot. Apropos of nothing, this morning, Sean Murphy was available at 25 to 1 to win the World Championship. If you want an outsider, that is value for me. 25 to 1. He's so talented. I mean, he really is. Every shot in the game, 19. for me... It just makes, still makes too many unforced errors. And over the length of matches, they play at the Crucible. Those multiply and can cost you. Twenty. So far in this final, he's been really resilient on several occasions when O'Sullivan's made one of those big clearances. You think it might be the, the coup de grace, the, the moment where Murphy's challenge, his resistance, will be over. But on many occasions, 
He's come back out punching in the very next frame. Twenty six. Thirty-four. Forty-one. Forty-two. I think he's okay. For a second, he might be hampered by this red. Oh, tell me that cue ball hasn't stuck on the red. What you know? That's end of break. Well, unless he wants to play a very risky plant to the left corner. Touching ball. Tell me, Phil, Fortune is going to play a part in this second frame as well. Well, first frame of the evening, if you remember, Murphy made 43. Didn't score again. He was bang in, then suddenly he's totally out. See, it's bang, straight plant, bridging over. Not easy. And well done. Is he on the black? I think so. And well done 50. to hold your composure. Surely now he's going to go on and win this second frame of the evening session. 57. 58th. Taking these very well. Showed good character. It's a test of his belief. In this far behind, does he believe he can still win this match? Oh. He's on this red. But he almost wasn't. 64. Should be money in the bank, this. Neither player so far in the match has missed a ball with the rest. Over. Stunning over for the black, which is frame ball. It's been a really captivating contest, 72. this. Had pretty much everything apart from a century. 73. And let's hope he makes it because it would be the 28th century of the tournament. And with Ludbrooks donating £100 per century to the Jesse May Children's Hospice at Home charity, we like to see the total totaliser creeping up. 79. Eighty. Eighty six. 
87. Really is a fantastic 94. snooker player to watch. As I said, he's got every shot in the game. 95. Talent to burn. <laughs> Fabulous break. A couple of little panic situations in the middle of it, but... 103. All in all, it's pretty nailed on when he got in and split the bunch. Needs more of this if he's going to win this match. 110. And keep his opponent in his chair. 112. Doesn't matter how good you are, when you're sat there, there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. That's the brutality of snooker. 115. Can't make enough to set a new target for the high break prize. O'Sullivan's in line for that, thanks to his 1-4-3 against Judd Trump in the semi-finals. But a real statement. One on thirty. Total clearance, total excellence. Sean Murphy is proving admirably stubborn. It's 7 4. Inferno. But this is Sunday night fever at the snooker. Brain 13, Ronnie O'Sullivan to Brett. And playing pretty hot, Mr. O'Sullivan. Like Grease Lightning, he's taken an 8 4 lead. Wow. And a miss. Answers on a post guard. Seven. What happened there, Steve? Free ball. Well, it was an excellent shot to snooker running behind the black. This always looked. Sean looked bemused, but it always looked the line to me when the cue ball was going on. Alan McManus made a really good point before the evening session began, saying that O'Sullivan's victories in tournaments this season, in all of the finals he's played, he's won easily. 10-3 in the Shanghai Masters against Judd Trump, 9-2 against Karen Wilson in the English Open, 10-5 against Sean Murphy in the UK Championship, 10-3 against Ding in the World Grand Prix, and the way things are going, it's going to be another foul. And a miss. Walk in the park. But I just four. get the feeling if Murphy can get ahead of steam, it might not be over yet, but he's got to win this frame.
We've seen very little sustained KG snooker in this match. The lengthiest frame is only 17 minutes. So the start of this frame breaking the mould somewhat. So this final, unusual in the fact that O'Sullivan yet to make a century break. Can't have been many finals he's won in his career without making one. Two tempters on either middle pocket. He doesn't normally take an undue risk, Ronnie Sullivan. Now well, I can doubt, pot yourself out of trouble. Oh, what a pot this was. We've got another one here. It's green to left middle. Almost as tough. Another great shot. It gets stronger the closer it gets to the winning line. Four. Five. And that must be demoralising for Murphy because, OK, the opening red was brilliant, but he was never going to be on anything easy, O'Sullivan. He knew in potting that green it would open things up and he dealt with the pressure and just floated it in. Thirteen. Twenty. Twenty one. Twenty nine. Well, he's on a red. To left corner, but I don't think it's in any position. 
even if he can get to the red. Opened up the previous frame with 40. Made the most of his second chance, and that's what he's hoping to do again here. Taking out two insurance policies, one red on the left-hand side cushion, one on the right-hand side cushion, making it all the more difficult for Murphy to launch a counter-attack. Sullivan's glad of those two reds, very glad. O'Sullivan's plundered four frames from well behind. Are we going to see a form of role reversal here? That greatly helps. No. Yeah, before he played the blue, I was going to say that looked like a an, pretty much a natural angle to cannon that red. Sean Murphy raised his hand. As an apology, he didn't play the cannon. This isn't easy to get position, aiming down on the cue ball when it's so close to the cushion. Sean Murphy, no. He called it, Stephen. The only good thing with the previous shot from Murphy, inadvertently, he got the other awkward red off the side cushion. So they're all there if he can get in again. So pressure on this. What? Oh, how well did he get the cue ball there? It didn't look possible to avoid the cannon on the yellow. Coming in out of bulk without making contact when in the bulk colours was an incredible shot.
inching ever closer to what would be his 33rd world ranking title. Six. And remarkably, it would be the seventh, 17th different ranking tournament he's won. Yeah, Phil, who's, who's going to step up to the plate and stop this man? John Higgins beat him comfortably in the Welsh Open. And I think one of possibly only two or three players in the game that Ronnie actually thinks can beat him. Seven. It's finally starting to look, well, it is looking like another procession to the winning line. Lots of things make O'Sullivan unique. One of them is that he's the dominant force in the 13. game. And yet people still want him to win. 14. Can't get enough. 20. Yeah, in the 90s, I certainly 21. had a fear factor over a lot of the players, but not to the extent that Ronnie's got it at the moment in World Snooker. Some great, great snooker players in this game. 27. And I think... 28. Nine, almost 97, 98% of them don't believe they can beat this man at the table. All true, and the lengthier 35. the match, the more frightening it becomes. 36. The opponent who's beaten O'Sullivan most often, of course, is himself. But not these days. Forty-two. Forty-three. Yeah, it's just very... Fourteen now. ...an easy life in snooker for Ronnie Silva at the moment. He just turns it up at a venue... 51. ...and collects a trophy at the end of the week. Fifty-four. In form, 58. he's always been relentless. Now, though, he's ruthless. Sixty-three. Sixty-nine. He's the king of snooker. And here in London, no, he's now one frame away from being crowned champion yet again. The scoreline, 9-4. He leads nine frames to four here. Neil, at uh, the start of the, this evening, you said 6-3 was a dangerous lead. Yeah. What are you making 9-4? Well, it's not dangerous anymore. It's all over, isn't it, now? And, um, yeah, I just think that Ronnie had to make sure he didn't um, do anything silly. And, you know, he hasn't won 32 ranking events by taking anyone lightly, and he didn't do that. Um, I don't think he's scoring quite as well as he can. Uh, and we've seen how devastating a score he can be this season more than ever. But he's producing little... You know, flashes of brilliance that are winning frames right now and some of the things he's doing are just wonderful to watch. Just putting Sean Murphy under so much pressure, isn't he? I said he had him in a, in a stranglehold. He has, hasn't mm. he? It's been more of the same, hasn't it? You know, it's been a bit feast or famine by Sean Murphy. He's looked good in, in short spells, as, as Neil says. Ronnie's not scored that heavy, but the, the little bursts that he put in are full of class and quality and he's dominating again, I'm afraid, and, and Sean, the, the, the silly mistakes have continued. Let's take a look then at uh, this opening four frames of the evening session. Yeah, I was saying actually at the, the top tonight, he plays the difficult shots better. I mean, most guys on the tour wouldn't even be able to attempt that shot. That, that's how difficult it was. It was unfortunate, mm, wasn't it? He but deserved to be on, some, be on something there. Now, this, 
here we see Ronnie, he's, he can only get onto the yellow in a certain area. He couldn't have put it any better with his hand to go yellow, roll it in and get on, because he wants green as well. And it's he hits this beautifully, yeah, it's doesn't It's a magnificent he? shot. I mean, the way that he played it as well, he just kind of stroked it and didn't worry about leaving it. And that's a big key. That took him to 7-3, but then yeah. Murphy made sure that we did have at least an interval with a magnificent break here. Mm, yeah, he did, and it was, a, it was a, a fine break. And this is you know, what at the point Alan's making. You know, that, OK, he didn't play a very good shot there, but he recovered the situation. You know, he is queuing ever so well, but he just doesn't seem to have... The, he can't sustain it, and, you know, he's just finding... Ronnie's pulling some out of the hat, isn't he, end of frame. So many frames Ronnie's won, Alan, that, you know, he could have easily lost. Well, too, right? I mean, the last couple of frames as well, I think Sean, um, again, a couple of chances going into frame 12. This, this was some of the good Ronnie stuff. He, how he's avoided the black here, he's got so deep in the cue ball and stopped short of the bolt line to set up the, the half ball brown and, and rip into the pack. He didn't um, go on and make a big contribution from there. But Sean here, Stephen called it in comms. I mean, this is the easy side of the game that he gets wrong. If, if he... If you say to Sean Murphy, put that blue and get on the red just adjacent to the spot, he would do it every time. If Stephen says he's tried too much and he's tried too much, you know... Too that, ambitious. Yeah, and these two shots here, well, I mean, look, <laughs> you won't see two better shots. Look at this. He's played that and a lot of people think, well, that's good, I've put the red, that's out of the way. In a way, this green is, is more difficult because he's doing damage. Uh, incredible way of getting in, a wonderful stroke maker, shot maker, getting in from nothing. If anything, the, the, the initial long red that he potted puts more pressure on that green. And it's difficult enough, by the way, that, that, as it is. Sean again, half chances and he's not taking them. And Ronnie's going to punish you. He's going to kill this you. Is a, this is a the sort of shot I'd expect Judd Trump mm. to play really brilliantly, you know. What? Really making that keeper work in and out of bolt. You know, the fact is, Ronnie O'Sullivan's got everything, and we should just think, right, look, this is a guy who's going to win five ranking events in the season. He's in his 43rd year. You've got to enjoy this, because you don't know how long he's going to be around for. It's just wonderful to watch him play. As you say, on the brink of five ranking events, continues to play like this, continues to dominate matches and, and put pressure on players. He could win six or seven. The interesting thing is, what age is he, 42, 43? There, there is no sign whatsoever that this is going to stop at some stage no. because he is improving and improving, getting better all the time. It's, it really is amazing. Neil, you're going to be heading into Comet yes. very soon. How long do you think you're going to be in there? Uh, one or two frames, no longer than that. And, uh, you know, I'll be, it's a pleasure to commentate on, on, on him play. You know, he's a wonderful, wonderful player and uh, he excites you every time. OK, stay with us for the conclusion of the final of the 2018 Players' Championship. Ronnie O'Sullivan on the brink of his fifth ranking title of the season. Will he bring it home? That's after the break. A wonderful ovation from this capacity crowd as the players return. Frame 14. With Ronnie O'Sullivan five up with to six to play. Surely he will clinch his fifth ranking title of the season sometime soon. Well, that's a loose one, a rare loose shot at range. The red, I think, by the black is certainly available, albeit not easy to get away from hitting the black on the way through. I'm sure he'll go for it. Can he avoid the black here? Well, he couldn't. Just remember thinking that the win Ronnie won in Preston, the World Grand Prix. And that was for the top 32 players, of course, on the one-year list. Our eyes and our thoughts came onto this event here in Glendidno. Top 16 on the one-year, longer matches. And I thought to myself, well, who's going to beat O'Sullivan? And the answer appears to be that no one can. Come on, Ronnie. 
Murphy's long pot fails. Indeed, his long potting today hasn't been anything like as good as it was beating Mark Williams in the semi-finals. Oh, what a... what! Goodness, well, that, that is just unbelievable because he's doing nothing with this. He's not trying to do anything, just pot it. There's no mystery to the shot. What? Well, what can Murphy do is, except stick to his game, stick to his method, fight it out to the last? But he's made far more unforced errors over the day's play than O'Sullivan Eight. has. And also, O'Sullivan has been tactically superior. No. No, as far as I say, Clive, that's one of the easiest shots I think that O'Sullivan has missed the whole season. He's played so well. It was just a regulation red. The audience won't mind if uh, Murphy wins two or three more frames, even if they're neutrals. 15. Or even O'Sullivan fans just want to see more of this. Two great players. 16. Murphy did once win a match from five down with six to play against Matthew Stevens at the Crucible, but... 22. This is Ronnie O'Sullivan he's playing. Yes, I was actually just going to say exactly that. I was commentating on that match, and he felt, well, in a minute, it's all going to come back on him, the pressure. And he won frame after frame, and when he got to 12, we just kept potting. Brilliant win. This is very awkward. Yes, he's already played one push shot today, and this is. Yeah, this could go that way as well. well it was clean, and it's a great shot. <laughs> but, of course, with the pink not available, the next colour's not easy. Can we switch it off, please? He must have known that from a thin cut the cue ball was going very near the ball pocket. Quite rare that the in-off will happen before the pot happens. And worst of all, it leaves an easy starter. From O'Sullivan, this has not been a performance of sustained brilliance of the standard what? of his display in the English Open final when he beat Karen Wilson 9-3, pot success rate 98%, made four centuries, only missed six pots all day, but it has been a performance from him of sustained effectiveness. Yes, he's been, his end game has been absolutely superb today. He's taken frames from Sean Murphy Six. that he probably shouldn't have won and right at the most important moment he's produced the big shots but you're absolutely right I've seen him score better Seven. and of course there, there might have been a time in his career when if he wasn't really scoring very big he, he wouldn't win at all earlier in his career he was perhaps a little bit too fixated on quality of performance rather than results. But he's got very interested in results lately. 15. Yes, and for years people said, well, he's, he, we know he's a brilliant player, but his unfulfilled talent, a career that might have been better, but 
I don't think you can say that anymore. I think he's he's maximising everything he's got. His talent, Point his ability two. to win, it's all there now. He's a Point better three. competitor than he's ever been. I think he would describe his performance today as solid, high-class solidity. 29. As he said, sometimes solid is enough. 30. And Ronnie O'Sullivan is much more effective in his lower gears than he ever has been. Yes, and of these five ranking tournaments that he's going to win, I'm including this one because I think he's about to win it. I think he played his best in Barnsley and his best... That's at the English. 36. And he went to uh, the other side of the defeat to Sean in the Champion of Champions. Played some outstanding snooker in Shanghai in the Shanghai Masters. He was actually a class apart in those events. He had one or two difficult matches. Obviously, the, uh, the semi-final victory against Judd Trump is a match that he freely admitted that he probably could easily have lost or should have lost. 24. But he's a wonderful player, the best I've seen. Privileged to be working with Stephen Hendry, who's another of the great, great players of the game. Those two stand alone for me. Fifty-two. This is his last chance to make a century today. It's very unusual for O'Sullivan to win a final without making one. Well, I'll tell you something, Clive. He hasn't won one match this year without 59. making a century in it. So this is his chance to keep that run going. 60. Just in between shots here, though. Sixty-eight. The match will be over at the end of this visit. Seventy-five. And it looks as if it is going to be a century from O'Sullivan. Yes, and he's avenged the defeat in Coventry in the Champion of Champions final. He's bitterly disappointed to, to have lost, I know. And, of course, he beat Sean Murphy in the Masters uh, UK final, I should say. 83. Almost scuppered his chances of a century. <laughs> what a pop that is. It was so difficult played the way that he played it. And this isn't easy either. Well, I'd love to see him make one. Nope. The match ends without O'Sullivan making a century. But he concludes it with a break of 85. He beats Sean Murphy by 10 frames to four for the £125,000 first prize. He is an authentic superstar, Snooker's answer to Tiger Woods and Roger Federer. His friend Robbie, who's been with him all week, congratulates him. Sean Murphy takes £50,000 as runner-up. He had his moment of glory in the semi-finals, beating Mark Williams. And he also made a break of 137 in this final, but he was overall outplayed by this marvellous snooker player. So, all, our, all over by the presentations, so over to John McDonald to introduce those.
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It was always going to be an amazing final, and now it's time for our presentation. On behalf of Labrooks, would you please welcome the head of sponsorship, Adrian Osman, who will now present our runner-up with his £50,000 and his silver medal, Sean Murphy. Sean. Uh, Sean, congratulations on making this final, because given how you've been the last few weeks, I think you would have been relieved just to be playing here. Is that not fair? Yeah, having pulled out the last two events, um, you know, I came here with absolutely no expectations, you know, barely able to play at all. So to be stood here talking to you tonight, having had the chance to take that beautiful trophy home, um, you know, is, is beyond my wildest dreams. I just, you know, last night I predicted that if I didn't play my best, I wouldn't win. And I was right. The thing is, though, you know, when you get into a final, you do want to win it, but you have come up against one of the very best in the business. Just a word on Ronnie and his season. Well, I, you know, I wouldn't uh, speak for all the players, but on behalf of the players, I think to pay a, a tribute to Ronnie, what he's achieving at the moment, what the standard he's playing, prolonging his career, and, and taking the game to new heights. You know, we're living in a very special time in snooker. Um, it's a real honour to share the stage with Ronnie. And uh, today I just wasn't good enough. Uh, but what I would say, Sean, is uh, you've given him a good game today. You've played fantastically well all week to get into this final. And with a couple of big tournaments coming up, how are you feeling? And given the next situation, you must take a bit of confidence out of this week. Yeah, I mean, I think it just goes to show that, you know, there's plenty in the memory bank because um, I genuinely haven't played very much. Um, I can't wait now to get to the, you know, China Open in Beijing next week uh, as we build into the, you know, that's the second biggest event now on tour and then build into the World Championships. It's uh, hopefully going to be an exciting few weeks. Best of luck to you, Sean. Thank you very much indeed. I'm going to have a word with our uh, champion now, if I may. Ronnie, um, you've got into a tremendous uh, winning habit. Your fifth ranking title of the season. Just how does that sound? Yeah, nice. Uh, fantastic. You know, to equal the record of Stephen and Mark Selby, you know, so... Yeah, just over the moon, and you know, Sean Sean um, played a, an amazing match yesterday against Mark Williams. So I was expecting a really tough game today, but he didn't he didn't show up like he did last night. So made it a little bit easier for me, but I still had to, you know, focus and treat every shot with respect because um, you have to, you know. And you know, I played pretty decent, and um, yeah, just really pleased, you know. Stephen Hendry up there is saying you're invincible at the moment. Do you feel that? Do you feel as though there's nobody out there at the moment really uh, can challenge you? No, not at all. You know, um, every match I come into, I always get the heebie-jeebies. Um, but once I'm out there, I start to feel like I fancy it. You know, so it's always the build-up for me that I kind of doubt myself. But once I'm out there playing, then you know, it's just um, it comes pretty natural. So, um, but listen, you know, I'm, I've just I've just got to try and, like Sean said, try and prolong my career. I can't play as much as all the other guys because I'd just be burnt out. You know, so I need a bit of a rest now to to give myself a chance for, for the, the remaining tournaments coming up. 33 career ranking titles. Uh, are you in the form of your life now? Uh, I mean, I'm playing as good as I ever have done, you know. Um, you know, I've, you know, the last six years I've played pretty pretty good stuff. You know, I had the odd year or so where I probably didn't focus as much on match snooker, but yeah, and this year I really have, and, you know, um, the results have shown. So, you know, I'm, I'm just delighted to still be picking up a bit of silverware. And, of course, you enjoy being here in Flindidna. We've seen you running on the Great Ormond. Really. It's been a great tournament, hasn't it? This crowd have been fantastic. Yeah, the, the, the crowd are amazing, you know. The be one of the best crowds we play in front of. A great venue, uh, great tournament, you know. Top 16, no numpties, which is great, you know. So, uh, <laughs> this, this tournament has a bit of quality, you know. Some of the other tournaments, you know, you just... Uh, like being in the zoo, you know, but uh, <laughs> no, this, this is pretty nice, you know, this is like, this is like first class, you know, um, so yeah, we're, uh, yeah, you know, it's nice. Yeah, you've been first class as well, Ronnie. We wish you all the best for the next couple of big tournaments coming up, and I'll let you now get on with the presentation. Thanks, Ronnie. Thank you. Cheers. Well, ladies and gentlemen, and now Adrian Osman on behalf of Labrooks will make the presentation and the moment we've all been waiting for. £125,000, the gold medal, the magnificent trophy, his 33rd ranking title. Ladies and gentlemen, let's crown him the Labrooks Players' Champion 2018, the Rocket Ronnie O'Sullivan!
Well, we've got rather used to seeing Ronnie O'Sullivan with a trophy in his hand. He's had a fantastic season and what a fantastic week here in Flandidno. We're not going anywhere. We'll be back to take a closer look at this week's fantastic action here in a couple of minutes. Sullivan has secured his fifth ranking title of the season, a real classy week from the Rocket here uh, in the venue Cymru, his 33rd career ranking title. And who is going to stop him? He certainly enjoyed that one and will no doubt be celebrating as we look back on what has been a high quality week of snooker. Here is our pick of the hot shots. did not have any difficulty at all picking out some hot shots this week. We were spoiled for choice. That was the kind of overview. Let's dig into the ones that we picked out specifically. Stephen, let's see your favourite. A bit lean this week, I think. Oh. I wasn't that impressed. But, oh, I thought it's some great <laughs> shots. <laughs> oh, really oh. I, did, I, I like Ding's shot. I like, off off, off, the, off the, the, the knuckle. This, this, is a, this is a clever shot. I mean, you, you can... Classic, you, wasn't it? You can, you can go in off, but... Um, you know, it's a start of the frame. Maybe he feels it's, it's a risk worth taking, but yeah, perfect, perfectly played. Cool shot. And the way he was able to control the cue ball off the back end of it, just, yeah, mm. stunning. Stunning. Yeah. Uh, who are we going to go to now? Alan, what about yours? I've got to go for the oh, thing. No, we know what the, yours the, is. <laughs> the, the red into the, the green pocket, wasn't it, by O'Sullivan, this one? Yeah. And if it doesn't go in this time, we, well, we are all going home. Can anyway, you recreate the, the, recreate the comment Right, OK. This. He can't put that from here, surely. Oh, get out of here! <laughs> <laughs> it was a fantastic shot. Brilliant I mean, shot. we were packing our bags. You said if we watched this, we could all go home. Oh, we're going to see it again. Well, well worth it. It could have been all of our hot shots, so we all like that one. Good table. Joe Perry, who's not here but was with us at the start of the week, he liked that one as well. Neil, let's have a look at yours. Yeah, I've gone with Mark Selby, who uh, we mustn't forget is the world champion. Uh, he played a good shot here. He looked at this, it wasn't a fluke, you know, he, he, had, he had a look at the angle and it was all in live play and he gave a chance. A bit of flukage there, I think. A fluke? Oh, I don't think so. Yeah, Do you think it's a fluke? That. He looked at it and he didn't apologise either. If I, I think picked you that, you just said it was a fluke. That's just, just saying. Let's, do you want to see mine? 
Last Come on, it's a plan. Also. It's a plan. I usually go for a double, but it's a two ball. It's, it's a two ball plant. Okay. I often go for okay. the double. This one's the two, but they haven't got it there. But it was it was something spectacular into it. the middle pocket. Yeah, but they don't see my my choice is unimportant. Nobody's interested. In <laughs> there was another great one that Mark Williams four ball pl uh, plant yeah, as well. That's right. Yeah. Here it is. Look, they found it. They pulled it out the this is pulled your it shot. out the bag. You just Ronnie Ronnie fan, aren't you? Simple as that. Well, everybody's a Ronnie fan. <laughs> Plays like this. You can't not be. See, no, it's spectacular. One in the frame. All of those shots actually were in live play because sometimes you get exhibition shots, but when there's you look at the scores and you know they're played with a, some importance, that's also good, isn't it? How have you enjoyed the week, Alan? Oh, brilliant. I think the standard overall. More centuries this week than a couple of weeks ago with 32 men in the field. Um, brilliant event overall. Someone's got to step up, as we mm -hmm. keep saying. Well worth for, well worth coming up for the weekend. Yep, yep. I'm glad glad to be here to to, to witness that. Um, you know, obviously unusual runner Sullivan win a, a final with with no centuries. Yeah, it's been great stuff, top to bottom. Just a quick uh, reminder of what we've coming got coming up here, sports wise on uh, ITV. Another of these. Yeah, there he is, Ronnie O'Sullivan, the 2018 Players Championship winner. And what a reception he's had here in venue Cymru. He was always going to be the man to beat this week and nobody was up for the job. And what a great final we've had here. Just fantastic. See the irrepressible Ronnie O'Sullivan in action. Neil Folds, um, he has impre impressed us all week from the minute he stepped into the arena. Yes, and in a different way, I think, to normal, you know. As I say, not this barrage of huge breaks. We saw him make four centuries in a best of nine against Zhao Gudong in Preston. I think the other frame he won, two seventies, ridiculous standard. And, and he's not played like that, but he is, seems to have seized on in very important moments in matches where he just pulled out two or three you know, brilliant shots. I mean, he could have lost in the semi-finals to Judd and probably should have done. And I think he came, when he came into the studio after that, he thought, wow, that, there's my lifeline. It's mine now. Another tournament's coming my way. And at the moment, I don't fancy anyone to beat him. No, we talked about him being invincible, uh, Stephen. He has that air about him now, doesn't he? Yep, I said in commentary, who, who's going who's to step up to the plate? Who, who's going to, you know, prove themselves and, and have that belief? Um, I think there's two or three players. I think there's three players that actually go to the table and, and think... They can beat him. I think it's Trump, John Higgins, and Mark Selby. I think the rest are are, are beat before they even get on the table. I mean, Sean, Sean Murphy can he's proven he, he can beat him, but on a, on a regular basis, does he really believe he's good enough to beat Sullivan regularly? I don't know. No, it felt that way today, didn't it, uh, Alan? Yeah, I mean, Sean will be disappointed it, it, when he looks back at the chances that he had to to only put four frames on the board. It'll, it'll be a major disappointment. I think he had high hopes coming in. Because uh, it's such a good performance against Mark Selby, but he's going to have to go and lick his wounds again, as, as a, a bunch of the other top guys are, and try and find a way. Let's have a look at how he won this then. Uh, he went into this final frame uh, leading by nine frames to four. As, you know, it, he knew that this was very much within yeah, his grasp. I think at this point, his race is run, and he knows that. It, you know, he's, he's probably over, he's potted it in the thin side, as we call it, <coughs> lost the cue ball, and by that, as I say, it was pretty much over, guys, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, we talked, Seven. we go back to that second frame this afternoon, that's how good Ronnie is. You've got to take, you've got to take those chances early. You can't afford to have any slip-ups, you've got to be bang on it from the word go against them to have any chance. But that was all, what it was always like playing you, Stephen, to be honest with you. You know, he, he, if he didn't do everything that was needed... Hey then they had, you had no chance of beating you. It was the same thing because, and even then it was going to be tough. But, yeah, he's playing to an amazing standard. His all-round game is quite astonishing mm. now. Though I'm I think you, it's interesting you mentioned Selby there because he is the one, if you like, player that's gone missing at the moment. We're not, we're not talking mm. about Mark Selby. I know he's world champion and we're looking at Ronald with the trophy. But, you know, Selby over a long match at the cruise but if he gets his game back, would be a further test for Ronnie O'Sullivan. Just the final test, really, of anything that he hasn't achieved so far recently. It's about, I suppose, um, Ronnie's concentration. It seems, in some regards, the only person that can beat Ronnie O'Sullivan is Ronnie himself if he's mm. not focused and, and on his game. And the one thing that's been crystal clear all this week, Alan, would be how comfortable he's looked. You know, he, he seems very comfortable in his skin and very settled. Yeah, and he's done that for quite a long time now, a number of years, actually, since he's worked with a couple of people in the mental side of, of, of uh, the game and... Um, He's taken his game, uh, not his ability, his ability's always been there. He's taken his mental attitude and his mm. application and probably his practice hours. I, I, you know, sometimes I think he says, oh, I don't practice that. He practices a lot from what I hear. Mm. 
on the tour, and that's to his credit, by the way. Mm. He should practice. He's very dedicated and professional. It'd be interesting, obviously, I think you did an interview earlier on in the week with Phil, and he credited Steve Peters, uh, I think from 2011 or something, says, and that he's helped his mental. So it'd be amazing to see if he didn't have Steve Peters, what would have happened in his career? Yeah, and there's one match, I think, and it, it seems strange I should mention one match. It was 2012. He hadn't won anything for a while. He, he was in the doldrums. He was 4-0 down against Andrew Higginson in the German Masters. Came back and won the match 5-4. Won the German Masters. Won the Worlds. Won it the year after. And he's never looked back since. So there was a turning point for me. And it was all in the space of a few days. And he's 42 years old. And the one thing that's clear about him is he is a consummate professional in that he is he's at the gym. He's out running. He knows how to keep his head right. And he knows that one of the things that he likes to do is get the endorphins running in the gym, uh, working out in the gym, and then he likes to keep himself fit. You know, some of the younger players could probably learn from that, Alan. You bet they could. I mean, um, you know, I was saying about the, the age he is in his early 40s, but there's absolutely no sign of, of this letting up. If anything, it's, it's putting more pressure on. And the word, he used one word earlier this season to sort of put the wind up the other guy's bottle. He's asking them, basically, someone come and challenge mm -hmm. me. Someone's got to come up. And I don't think he's can, by the way. So that kind of put, it was clever, it's put pressure on everyone. And they're all falling like uh, nine pins. It's a know. heck of a gauntlet, isn't it? Yep, I mean, if he keeps playing like this, I mean, the, the, the World Championship, you know, we, we know that sometimes he, he struggles and he admits that he struggles with a 17-day slog that is Sheffield. I mean, that's, that's a different tournament to everything else. But at the moment, the way it's looking like it could be a little bit of a procession. Yes, it, I think, look, if he doesn't like the World Championship, he has won it five times, so we shouldn't mm. forget that. He doesn't mind it that mm. much. He prefers it to some players that have never won it. And... Um, he, he will be the man to beat again. But, you know, sometimes the Crucible stirs up pressures, I think. And in the last couple of seasons, I don't think he's been as comfortable there as he has in, in years gone by, you know. But no one's going to want to play him, are they? No chance. Some players like to float under the radar a little bit. Judd Trump says he's going to go in the World Championships. Nobody's going to really be looking at him. How does that mantle of being the, the favourite in the spotlight, the invincible, the one to be, how does that sit on his shoulders, do you think? I think I think he can handle it. I don't think he could have won all these tournaments if, if he couldn't handle it. Um, yeah, I think going to the World Championships, maybe he doesn't feel under the same pressure this year. Maybe he'll think, well, if I don't win the world title, I've still done a lot of damage. He could well be number one soon. Everyone's saying, oh, Selby's miles in front. Well, if he doesn't win the World Championship, and Ronnie does, Ronnie almost overtakes him at the end of the championship, not far short, and he's going to be number one next year at some point. He's won everything this year on a two-year list. So, you know, Selby's reign at the top is... is potentially coming to an end. He's still the champion. Um, but Ronnie is just winning too many things not to be right up there and he could be world number one soon. Yes, yeah, Stephen, how does that mm. sit, do you think, on Ronnie's shoulders? You were the, in exactly the same position, that big target on your back, but it, he seems quite comfortable with it. I, I think what Alan said, the fact that he can come in and say challenge the players, have they got the bottle, that means he's comfortable with it. That means he's comfortable saying that, you know, come and get me. You know, it's, uh, you know, come and have a go if you think you're hard enough. It's that saying, isn't it? It's, it's, and, and, and nobody at the moment is, is stepping up. And jo we say, I mean, go back to John Higgins, you know, he, 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 he slaughtered him 5-0 in, in, in the Welsh Open. Um, but can he sustain that over a long match at the Sheffield, say best of 25 or best of 31? I don't know. OK, well, coming up after the break, we will be looking back at the ups and downs from the whole week here in Clendidno, including a bumper selection of hot shots for our expert panel to pick from.